97 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. U.S. President Joe Biden voices hope that a deal would soon be reached between Israel and the Islamist Hamas for the release of hostages in exchange for far-reaching Israeli concessions. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stresses that Israel cannot forgo control over the Philadelphia corridor out of strategic considerations. Britain announces the suspension of a number of arms exports licenses to the State of Israel. Jerusalem will not relent over Israel's national security interests despite extensive international pressure that seeks to bring the war against Islamist Hamas in the Gaza Strip to a close. Widespread demonstrations were recorded particularly in Jerusalem and the city of Tel Aviv over public frustration vis-à-vis -vis the state of negotiations regarding a hostage release outline, urging the Israeli government to essentially succumb to the Islamist Hamas's demands that they hope would ultimately return all hostages from captivity. And while negotiations, which are spearheaded by the United States, continue, U.S. President Joe Biden voiced hope that talks to secure an arrangement with Hamas would ultimately bear fruit. I'm heading to a national security meeting right now, and then going to Pittsburgh. And uh, so, checking on what's following up on what's happening in Israel, and then uh, I'll be off to Pittsburgh. Are you planning to present a final hostage deal to the, uh, both sides this week? We're very close to that. What makes you think that this deal will be successful in a way that the other deals were not? Hope springs eternal. President Biden was further asked about whether Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, whose political rivals in Israel blame for supposedly hindering the indirect negotiations with Hamas over his determined position to maintain a military presence in the strategic Philadelphia corridor, was doing enough to secure an agreement. Mr. President, do you think it's time for Prime Minister Netanyahu to do more on this issue? Do you think he's doing enough? No. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, in response to the latest developments, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held an extensive press briefing, during the course of which he responded to President Biden's claims against him. I was asked whether Israel is not, I'm not doing enough to the release of hostages. Well, I want to set the record straight. On April 27th, Secretary of State Blinken said that Israel made an extraordinarily generous offer for a hostage deal. On May 31st, Israel agreed to a U.S.-backed proposal. Hamas refused. On August 16th, Israel agreed to what the United States defined as a final bridging proposal. Hamas refused again. On August 19th, Secretary Blinken said, Israel accepted the U.S. proposal. Now Hamas must do the same. On uh, August 28th, that's five days ago, five days ago, Deputy CIA Director said that Israel shows seriousness in the negotiations. Now Hamas must show the same seriousness. I want to ask you something. What has changed in the last five days? What has changed? One thing, these murderers executed six of our hostages. They shot them in the back of the head. That's what's changed. And now after this, we're asked to show seriousness? We're asked to make concessions? What message does this send Hamas? It says, kill more hostages, murder more hostages, you'll get more concessions. The pressure internationally must be directed at these killers, at Hamas, not at Israel. We say yes, they say no all the time, but they also murdered these people. And now we need maximum pressure on Hamas. I don't believe that either President Biden or anyone serious about achieving peace and achieving the release would seriously ask Israel 
Israel to make these concessions, we've already made them. Hamas has to make the concession. Netanyahu also asserted in his opening remarks to the Israeli public that unity was and remains the core ingredient to attain victory in this existential war against the Iran-led axis of evil. We are in the midst of an existential war against Iran's axis of evil. The first condition for victory in this existential war is unity within our ranks. We must stand united as one man, facing a brutal enemy that seeks to destroy us all, all of us, without exceptions, left and right, religious and secular, Jews and non-Jews. We witnessed this, not only on October 7th, we witnessed this throughout the entire during of the war. Moreover, we witnessed this once again in the abhorrent massacre of the cold-blooded execution of six of our hostages. I told the bereaved families, and I reiterated it also this evening, I ask for your forgiveness that we did not manage to return them alive. We were close, but we did not succeed. I also reiterate this evening, Israel will not remain silent regarding this massacre. Hamas will pay a very heavy price. The Israeli premier went on to stress the strategic importance of the Philadelphia Corridor, which is the only lifeline for the Islamist Hamas terror group, and therefore, Jerusalem cannot relent. The war against the axis of evil, in this specific war against Hamas, and also in the north, we have established four objectives to destroy Hamas, to return all of our hostages, to ensure the Gaza would no longer pose threat to Israel, and to return our residents safely along the northern border. Three of these objectives pass through one place, the Philadelphia Corridor. This is the pipeline of oxygen and armament of Hamas. Philadelphia Corridor is essentially the border between the Gaza Strip and Egypt. The moment we left it, we had no barrier to thwart massive entry of weaponry, machines to develop weaponry, and machines to dig tunnels, which was granted by Iran that directed and financed it all. The axis of evil needs the Philadelphia Corridor. For this same reason, we must control the Philadelphia Corridor. Hamas insists for this very reason that we would not be there, and it is for this reason that I insist that we will be there. Netanyahu further responded to claims by Israel's top military brass, the majority of whom are convinced that Jerusalem could temporarily abandon the Philadelphia Corridor for the purpose of securing the release of hostages. All those who say that we can enter, there is no issue, there is an issue. Very much so. It isn't easy to do it. It isn't a tactical military matter. It is a matter of significant political pressure that will be applied against us by the entire world. If we exit, we won't return. We won't return. If we leave the Philadelphia Corridor and everyone understands the importance of Israel's presence there but don't support us, they want us to end the war. This is actually what everyone wants, for us to end this war. However, this corridor is different from all other corridors, from all other places. It is central, as it determines the future, our entire future. Its importance is significant to us, but the world that wants to end the war won't want us to return there and significant pressures will be applied against us. Turning to London, where British Defence Secretary David Lammy 
announced the suspension of around 30 from a total of approximately 350 defense exports licenses to the State of Israel. This government is not an international court. We have not and could not arbitrate on whether or not Israel has breached international humanitarian law. This is a forward-looking evaluation, not a determination of innocence or guilt, and it does not prejudge any future determinations by the competent courts. But facing a conflict such as this, it is this government's legal duty to review export licences. Criteria 2C of the Strategic Export Licensing Criteria states that the government will not issue export licences if there is a clear risk that the items might be used to commit or facilitate serious violations of international humanitarian law. It is with regret that I inform the House today the assessment I have received leaves me unable to conclude anything other than that for certain UK arms exports to Israel, there does exist a clear risk that they might be used to commit or facilitate a serious violation of international humanitarian law. I have informed my right honourable friend, the Business and Trade Secretary, and he is therefore today announcing the suspension of around 30 from a total of approximately 350 to Israel as required under the Export Controls Act. These include equipment that we assess is for use in the current conflict in Gaza. London's top defence official went on to stress that while Britain does not make an equivalence between Israel and the Iran-led axis to include Hamas, the UK must assess, however, Israel's compliance with international humanitarian law. There is no equivalence between Hamas terrorists and Israel's democratic government, or indeed Iran and their partners and proxies. But to license arms exports to Israel, we must assess their compliance with international humanitarian law, notwithstanding the abhorrence of their opponents' tactics and ideology. This is not an arms embargo. It targets around 30, approximately 350 licenses to Israel in total for items which could be used in the current conflict in Gaza. The rest will continue. In response to the British government's decision, Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz released a statement in which he highlighted, quote, Israel is disappointed by the British government's recent series of decisions, including the latest decision regarding security exports to Israel. Minister Katz further stressed that Israel is a law-abiding state that operates in accordance with international law and has an independent and respected judicial system. We expect friendly countries such as the UK to recognize this all year round, especially just days after Hamas terrorists executed six Israeli hostages during intense negotiations for the release of the hostages and for a ceasefire, and in light of the recent threats by the Iranian regime to attack the state of Israel. Jerusalem's top diplomat further warned that a step like the one taken by the UK now sends a very problematic message to Hamas terrorist organization and its backers in Iran, and voiced hope that the deep friendship between the UK and Israel, which has been maintained throughout all the years since the founding of the State of Israel, will continue in the future. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. Please pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the redemption of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.